Welcome to Unfold Data Science friends. My name is Aman and I am a data scientist. In this particular video, we are going to understand what are the different areas in which interviewer will ask you questions when you talk of DB scan clustering or density based clustering as such. Okay. So interviewer will try to understand what is your understanding from the algorithm point of view, how density based clustering works how db scan works what is the fundamental principle what are the advantages what are the disadvantages that is one area and other area and more important area of db scan clustering or density based clustering is how do you set the parameters and what are the importance of parameters in density based clustering we will understand what are the different questions in this area and i'll tell you how to answer those questions confidently let's start guys before moving on, I want to share a screenshot with you guys. One more time request to you guys, please press the subscribe button and the bell icon if you like the videos so that I get motivation of creating more such videos. Let's start guys. So first of all, from the algorithm point of view, right, how db scan clustering works. So it, it is a density based clustering which sees the nearest points in terms of density. I have created a detailed video on this application. The link is here. You can watch that video. Now the question comes, why DB scan clustering? When we have k-means clustering and other clustering, what is the usability or why a new technique or when it will be useful, right? So I have drawn here two diagrams guys. Okay. Every time you try to understand k-means clustering, somebody is explaining in YouTube or even if you see some tutorials, right, you will find this kind of graph in k means clustering explanation. But in real world, we might not see that kind of points always, right? Sometimes the points might be lying like this. Sometimes the points might be lying like this. Sometimes the point may, you know, fall some arbitrary shape, nothing of these two. So you have to understand one thing here neither k-means clustering nor density based clustering nor heretical clustering will work well in all these situations right that is where we are looking for different clustering approaches for different situations if interviewer tries to ask you these questions why db scan or in which kind of situations db scan will work good you can say that for example in this situation right if you put a k-means k-means will try to find a centroid by nearest point example let's say so probably probably the better cluster allocation is one cluster is this and other cluster is all these points probably but how k-means might cluster these points is k-means might say this as one cluster just i'm hypothetically putting here and this as another cluster something like this which is not a very good you know, if you see here, this is not making much sense here. K-means will do good when your data is having different centers and different alignment of the points like this. In these situations, your DB scan will do better. So the answer of the question, why DB scan? In some situations, data might not be suitable for K-means or heretical clustering. For example, these situations. Another advantage, I'm talking advantages and disadvantages also, okay? People ask you, what are the advantages? Advantages will be, you no need to define K like K means clustering. You no need to say to the algorithm that, you know, you have to divide in two clusters or three clusters. No need of that. You no need to worry about noise and outliers much that will be handled in density based clustering very well as compared to K means clustering. These are some of the advantages of your density based or DB scan clustering. But everything comes at a cost, right? some of the disadvantages of db scan clustering first one guys your clustering is not going to do good if the data scatter or the data alignment is not how db scan expects it to be what is the meaning of this guys db scan expects data to be in you know density wise data should be allocated in the plane if your data is something which is suitable for k means maybe this algorithm will not do good that is disadvantage number one disadvantage number two is suppose suppose you are using a multi-core processor suppose you are training your model on 
multiple physical computers let's say okay in this type of algorithms one drawback is you cannot process part of the algorithm part of the data on one node and some part of the data on other node the reason for that is algorithm has to look at all your data points together to decide the density so from processing point of view this is one disadvantage you cannot make use of multi core processing or multi threading kind of scenarios the third is in db scan clustering not your all data points are clustered so as i was showing in my uh, python video also there was cluster minus 1 assigned to some of the points these points are nothing but noise points okay suppose a business gives you 1000 data points okay and you tell to business that hey you know what i am able to cluster 990 of these data but 10 data points i am not able to find a suitable cluster for that it does not sound that great right so you are calling and this 10 can be large also for example if 100 points come as a noise right beyond a level if you call that as noise that is something which does not look good from business point of view you are not able to create proper cluster that is one more disadvantage and in algo side people might ask you questions around core point water point what is the noise point these are the mostly on algorithm side these are the things people might ask you on um, distance matrices euclidean manhattan all these things right another area which interviewer will touch here is all these whatever i spoke in this area i have explained in my first video of db scan you you must watch that video if you have not watched okay another area and more important is parameters in density based or db scan clustering okay one more disadvantage i want to add here guys it is very sensitive to parameters okay so what are the parameters in your model one is called epsilon and another is called minimum sample minimum sample size or minimum data point okay your clusters are very sensitive to these two things okay so if you say uh, epsilon is equal to 3 and next iteration you say epsilon is equal to 5 it creates a lot of difference in clustering so that also can be taken as one downside of this clustering now the thing is what is your understanding of epsilon and minimum sample people will try to ask you epsilon is nothing but your definition of closeness minimum sample is nothing but how many samples you want to be called as one cluster minimum definition of core point okay and next thing that interviewer will ask you is how do you decide your epsilon and how do you decide your minimum number of samples so one thing i want to tell you guys here is both the things right both the things is little tricky to decide minimum sample also epsilon also okay i'll tell you why if you decide a small epsilon right small epsilon then there is a possibility that many points will be called as a near points and you know you might have your core points and your border points might not get defined properly on the other hand if you define a large epsilon right there is a possibility that none of the meaningful clusters are being formed so you have to find that balance same comes in minimum number of sample as well same fundamental theory how much you want to call as a one cluster minimum number of points we will discuss some basics about how to decide this first of all minimum number of sample so this parameter is nothing but in your cluster how many minimum data points together as a group you want to call as core points or you know nearby point to the core point okay first is you should talk like this in the interview okay you might need a business input you might need a business input because you do not know what might be the you know near, nearby people to that people or nearby product to that product for example if i sell t-shirts i can say that you know roughly uh, 100 people may be similar so in that case my minimum sample becomes 100 if i know business if i don't know business then what happens so here you cannot have minimum sample as zero why because it doesn't make any sense right you cannot call zero points as one cluster minimum number of sample one you cannot have why because one is core point itself right in minimum number of sample if you say five then including core point there should be four other points to be called as a cluster so one is also ruled out 
what about 2 if you put here 2 then what will happen is it is a very less number very less number so always always it should never be it should always be greater than equals to d plus 1 okay d is dimensions dimensions means number of features in your data for example if i am calling here two features then my minimum number of samples should at least be three at least okay so minimum number of samples should start from three okay and remember if you do not have any business input if you do not know if you have no idea of what what you should put here right just remember two things you should start with three okay less than three you should not keep and second thumb rule is two into d okay so you can start with two into d two into d means d is your dimension so here my data is in two dimensions so my minimum number of points will be four this is applicable to large dimensions data or even medium dimensions data also which is our regular data in data science okay so remember two into d minimum number of samples you have to tell to the interviewer why not zero why not two why not one right all these things will create a very good impression next thing is how do you decide epsilon so what is epsilon the degree of closeness what are you calling as close right so here in my python video the link for which is here i had shown you one way of how can you decide the optimal epsilon so just to watch that video guys that is an important video for understanding this but i want to tell you one thing here is your epsilon should not be very high and it should not be very low and second thing is we do not know for which data what epsilon will be suited best there is no one fixed kind of value right what we have to see is how data are in that particular space for example if you take this data here right so this is the distance between one data point and another data point this is the distance between one data point and another data point this is the distance between neighboring data point we have to see the neighboring data points are how far the definition of neighbor also changes right i am in bangalore i am in let's say area one of bangalore area two which is near to my area this distance i can call far or near based on with respect to what i am comparing right so one of my friends stays in area two i can call him far if my neighbor is my friend right the definition of far and near changes and if my friend is staying in delhi and i compare the distance with that distance i will call my area two distance as near right what i am coming here to say is definition of near and far changes so for your data the neighboring point distance what is the neighboring point distance for most of the data points that you have to see and that is exactly what i have shown in my that video once you have an idea on that then you can roughly estimate what should be your epsilon value for this particular data points okay and if you have any confusion in understanding what is epsilon and what is minimum number of sample kindly watch my first video on db scan where i have explained these things in detail so these are the areas guys which interviewer will try to touch understand and see if you understand parameter if you understand how to optimize it and all those stuff in algorithm side and parameter side i hope you like this video guys and i hope you'll be able to answer questions on density based clustering such as db scan in your upcoming interview let me know your doubts comments feedbacks i'll see you all in the next video guys till then wherever you are stay safe and take care